His Excellency <laughs> Derito Murindi is the governor of Laikipia <laughs> County. He is also the chair of the Azimio Presidential Campaign Board. He is with us in the studio. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Eric. Good to have you again on the show. Well, it's good to be here. Yeah. Good morning, dude. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, Professor Adam Zolo, we've invited the man a number of times, and now today, Hayawi Hayawi. Hua. Mushowe. Hua. Professor well, Adam Zolo. <laughs> For this purpose, it can, it be, can June. be June. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Closing the financial year on a high. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Adam Zolo is from the University of Nairobi Department of Political Science. Um, he, he, the two gentlemen who are in the studio participated in uh, crafting the Azimio Manifesto. Am I right? Uh, you're right. Although, uh, although uh, the professor uh, uh, you know, <laughs> takes lead. Prof as, Prof as the needle and the threads. Uh, Professor the needle. He's the needle. <laughs> <He's> the needle. <laughs> <laughs> Professor inputted. Yeah. This is a collective effort. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. What to Azimio are humble mm -hmm. before they take power. Wow, wow. Low blow. <laughs> 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 18. <laughs> But good to have you in the show, Prof. Thank, thanks, Eric, and thanks, Charles. Thanks, and Ndu. Thank you. you know, um, when we heard that uh, the Azimio Manifesto was going to be launched, of course, uh, being in the media, we got the advanced abridged version and, of course, also the other version. We started looking into it, Indeed. and and we saw, hey, okay, so there's it's uh, been broken down into ten points, mm -hmm. and it's Azimio la one, two, three in Swahili words. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, so it looks it looks uh, well written, impressive. And, uh, and others would argue, okay, well written, yeah, but what more does it have? If I just look at, for example, what the nation has summarized on the front page mm -hmm. on the issue of education, employment of all untrained, uh, all trained but jobless teachers, free education going all the way to university level, offering a meal a day for all uh, early childhood and lower primary school pupils. Mm -hmm. We're looking at social protection. The Alavcita is right there now in the manifesto for two million households and then going on into civil servants getting uh, medical cover even after retirement the monthly upkeep for single mothers wow health insurance barber care we've we've heard about this before the devolution and the increased allocation to the counties uh transferring the other devolved functions and the funds that were needed all these things that we've seen there if we were just to summarize them, Prof, what are the anchors? Because they sounded like there are very many things. It's, you know, you are promising to do everything at the same time. Yes. But what's the lead? What's, what's going to be the needle? Uh, look here, yeah, we are basically saying that uh, come August 10th, uh, you are looking at an economic revolution. Uh, I know when you're asking what's the needle, it's as if you're asking, how will you finance this? Yeah. yeah. Now, what, I, what, what's, what's going to be the first one? I mean, I, I don't imagine that you're going to do all these things immediately together. Are you? Is that what the proposal is? Look here. Let me, let me just give you an example. Mm. And you see, if you go to... 2002, when NAC came to power. NAC also, if Eric, you were, uh, if Spice was existing, mm. you too would have said, what's the needle? And you see, immediately NAC came to power, mm. uh, schools were opening. And you remember the free primary education? I'm just trying to give you an example. Yep. And all of a sudden, uh, if I can give the example of Olympic Primary School, there was an influx of students. There was an influx of, pupils. of students and all that. Yeah. Did it happen or did it not happen? It did. Despite the naysayers saying, you know, we need some more time. Exactly. The president uh, told his education uh, yeah. minister, Saitoti, yeah. let the children go to school. They went to school. Uh -huh. 
And you know who was one of the pillars of that NAC government? Mm -hmm. Now he's in the driving seat. Mm -hmm. And he told you yesterday, my first hundred days. So all you do is you pick what you feel is a jamboree there mm. and you go and juxtapose it against what he said he'll do in the first hundred days. Mm. And in this hundred days, he has not put them in hierarchy. And there you pick the puzzle and pieces. And voila. So all these things are going to happen. Hmm. Let me read what the first 100-day plan is, um, mm -hmm. just to bridge what has been covered here. Stimulus and recovery. Plan, roll out economic stimulus and recovery plan in agriculture, promote innovative and entrepreneurial agriculture, promote agro-processing and value addition, review policies and laws and standards to guide the sector, implement minimum return guarantee framework for farmers, you have suffering in the environment, life sentence for pause poaching. Pause there for a moment. Eric. Very many things. Eh? Pause there. Eh. You see the, the you know, guarantee to minimum prices, th there's an old law that needs to, and it's from the 70s, it just needs actually to be uh, sorted out. Mm. I mean, that doesn't need 100 days. If you take, for example, grains like wheat, you know, the main issue is that we tax imported uh, wheat at 60%. You know, that doesn't require 100 days. <clears throat> take access to credit. Um, in, a, in a manner very reminiscent of 2003, mm. Uh, you do something with the cash ratio and uh, the following day banks are uh, in much more liquidity they than they were today. Mm -hmm. So many of these things do not actually require a uh, hundred days. What they do require is, is political will. What they do require is a team that knows what they're doing, not guessing. Mm. And it's interesting that we, we have started on that 2003 note because if you look at the, the, the candidate and the key team players, many of them, in fact, cut their teeth, if, if I can use that terminology, in that NAC administration. So when you look at Martha Karoa herself, uh, even a recent addition like Kipruto Lapkiro, Kisa Kitui, uh, mm. uh, all, of them, yes, all of them mm. uh, uh, cut their teeth in that first Kibaki administration. So this is a team that, uh, that is very well grounded. And when we say we are going to do things, we are going to do things. I think the question, though, that mm. it just even as we read this agenda, you yeah. read these 10 points, even reading it seems really overwhelming. That it just appears that there's so much that needs to be fixed. And so the question is, it to be honest, it mm. sounds great to hear it. But I think the question that is lingering in the minds of many today is mm. how are these things going to work? Are we talking about a simultaneous, you know, approach to all of this? Let different quarters be working at the same time. We're talking about money that's going to be released in the billions. And then the question is, where is it coming from? We're talking about initiatives that are going to be executed and is, can we actually roll out all of these things at the same time? Realistically, beyond the glossy paper and the appeal of promise is this a practical approach to getting things done it is a very very practical approach mm. and and um mind you you see there, there are 10 points they're not they're not hundreds uh, 10 heavy points well, ten heavy point. but social protection for mm. instance eh? we 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 first of all we're not starting from scratch we're building on on social protection that exists mm -hmm. you're trip you're tripling it yes but you are not starting from scratch okay. i mean you're not you're there's not, already a framework there's already a, a framework the the targeted two million two million households but it's not people two million households mm. uh, are already identified um if you take barber care you 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 want to um the, the key bit there is about whether everybody has insurance. You already have 17 million individuals on NHIF and you want them to, uh, you know, go to the whole population. So I, I honestly think, uh, well, it's interesting you use the word overwhelming uh. because we are interested in an economic revolution. Hmm. 
we are interested in in uh, in uh, uh, social uh, and governance transformation so in a very real sense uh, you know a revolution ought to be overwhelming you can't you can't just think around the edges and think that you're going to if i can interject right there if we look at the revolutions that happened in different parts of the world they were yeah. at zero Look at the industrial revolution that take place that took place they had no choice but to build from the bottom so here we are and we're saying that mm. the status quo in kenya the way it has been before is that maybe you have a public service who kind of just gets by at mm -hmm. the end of the day you have people who are supposed to be doing certain things and it just implementation has been the bane of the existence of this economy mm -hmm. or lack of it rather for the longest time so if we're saying we're building on that i think that's where the overwhelming comes in because you're saying this is how things have been for the longest time how essentially how are we going to essentially overhaul this to uh. make this happen well, first of all, uh, if, if the Industrial Revolution, I think, uh, for example, in the case of, 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 of England or the UK, it yeah. took, you know, two, two, two centuries right. to, to actually uh, get it to work. Mm. If you look at the US, uh, it took uh, maybe 100, 150 uh, uh, years. But when we say we're building, mm. perhaps uh, you need to interpret it or we need to interpret it in, 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 in this context. Uh, take agriculture and manufacturing. Mm. We have agriculture right now. But what happens is that the simplest tool, the simplest machine, the simplest piece of equipment, a shaft cutter mm. to, to, to cut, you know, uh, wheat. Uh, not, uh, wheat or other fodder mm. for, <laughs> for your ngombe mm. is imported from China. Mm. And there is absolutely no reason and no need for that to happen. So when you talk about, when you look at the way the, the manifesto is, is crafted, and if you will, the internal order mm. in it, the centerpiece is manufacturing. Mm. Okay. That we, first of all, it's not necessary, and we should not do it. And in any case, it's the big, big, gigantic opportunity uh, to grow our economy and to create jobs manufacturing for ourselves mm. so if you listen to 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 if you read it and you listen to what we are talking about we're saying look it's not just consumer manufacturing so not just making juice or, or bottling water mm. it is making the machines that you use these things to to bottle uh, the juice and in fact it is going beyond that is making the steel and the aluminium that you require in order to make the machines that you require to make the juice and it is quite straightforward, really. Just near us here, uh, numerical machining complex mm. is capable of producing uh, three tons of high-grade steel yeah, per hour. So we should start there. Mm. Yeah. Is that the plan? Because, like you say, we have, we have all these building blocks, yes. all right? We have a manifesto. And Prof, as you are writing this manifesto, what's was as you're looking at the bigger picture is there a plan of where do we start and how do we move because jack ndu is saying and that was the basis of my question even initially there are very many things to be done what is the work plan what is the process what where do we start where do we go to next you see uh eric you know me i'm both theoretical and practical mm. And you see, a manifesto is a statement of intent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, and uh, you'll forgive me for using Nakanak as an example, because this is another Nak moment. Mm -hmm. If you look at Nak, then there was the Nak manifesto. Then once Nak got into office, especially domiciled in the Ministry of Planning, they now develop the economic recovery strategy document. Mm. So you are right that we have shown you the statement of intent. Then there'll come the program of action. And let me just go to what Nderitu is saying, for mm. example, because mm. we have seen that manufacturing is going to be the driver of this process. Mm. And we are basically saying that if you look at manufacturing now, it's only at 7.5% of the GDP. Mm. 
and you are saying we want to grow this to 30% of the GDP. And you are saying that, yes, there's a way in which things have been done before. And you're saying you are, you are going to come and things are going to change. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are going to change. Because this is not about uh, business as usual. Mm. This is about, and look, when we are talking about manufacturing and you go down memory lane, if I can even take you all the way to session of paper number 10 of 1965, mm. which has been the baseline even for subsequent policies that we have developed, including Vision 2030. Mm. And you see a departure because session of paper number 10 was talking of developing potential areas. Mm. And that's how the rest of the country remained behind the so-called marginalized area. Mm. If you go to our 10-point agenda, you are already seeing that we have said one county, one product. At yep. least, and that should not be misread, that you can only produce, that a county can only produce one. <laughs> Choose it just yours. Means, yes, exactly. It simply means that... <laughs> though, that at least. The, yes, at least one. Mm. And if you look at the collapse of industries, let me use Western province, mm. for example. And you look at the collapse of industries, whether it is the sugar industries, whether it is the paper mills, mm. and people usually forget even the cotton generics the cotton in, Busia, in, in Busia and so on. Mm. And we're basically saying that if you are going to go back to manufacturing, and you have seen Mitumba has become a, a kind of fanfare in this country mm. that uh, if I go and get that what Sir George has won and it is whatever <laughs> and our Kikomis, our River Texas and our Kenrens and what have you collapsed. Uh, cotton we nearly abandoned even uh, producing cotton mm. and all and it is within that global uh, vision that we are going to draw our program of action mm. so that as we change and i know this is important for you mm. as we change the mindset that has been there because you know there's a there's an idea of you going and it is business as usual it's mm. not going to be business as usual this economic revolution is all is going to be multifaceted because you are bringing new thinking you're bringing new 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 work ethic if you remember kibabiki talked of a, a working nation yep and we are going in this with a mindset of saying look we know where the rain has beaten us and remember this is the same candidate and finally they formed the same coalition government who had said in his 2007 manifesto infrastructure infrastructure in infrastructure because he was like there is no development that would occur without you laying the base for the infrastructure mm -hmm. you can say that infrastructure has been set and you saw the way he came and people were blaming him for uh, businesses that had been set up on road reserves and all that but he said kipaki agreed with him because he was the Minister of Roads and Public Works, this has to go on. Look, if you are a current public servant, and we have said manufacture, manufacture, manufacture is going to be our driving process. If you are not ready to board the train, because that is where we are going, that's the revolution we're talking about. You know, when um, mm -hmm. the NAC government first came in, the, the, the country that they came in to govern over was very different from the one we have here. I listen to your conversations, but I don't hear enough of how it is the county governments are going to be involved in this process because from where I sit, they are at the heart of everything that you are saying. Yes. Now, and um, we have a sitting governor who's going to make it back. So I'll, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll leave to him to go <laughs> first. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Mm. I mean, and, and uh, allow, allow me to, to sequence it, you know, maybe because uh, Eric has put the word sequence in, in my mind, eh? that you say, can you simultaneously start acting in all these spaces? 
And my answer to you is yes. Mm. And please, go into the detail like, for a moment. Talk, let's take like, two. Take SMEs. Implementing recognition of player learning. Yeah? Mm. Uh, shahada. Yeah? Jitihada. Mm. Because the thing is, and again, a very straightforward point, millions of small micro-businesses have learned the skill. Now, they may not have an engineering degree, mm. but they have learned the skill. Um, if you look at how we report, for example, in newspapers, we always say, look at this standard eight dropout or from four dropout and they have made and what, a car and what they've done hmm. or they have made this other thing or this other thing well look that's the point there are thousands if not millions of us who have acquired the skill set maybe through apprenticeship um, uh, learning by doing hmm. and we can test the skill we don't have to to wait for for now implementing that is simply a question of an executive decision that that's what we are doing. Then you start doing it. Now, will you reach everybody on day one? You may not reach everybody on day one, but you'll start on, on day one. Take, a, take a, a, you know, like the, the idea of creating a financial institution mm. to provide, uh, you know, uh, low interest credit uh, to Bobada Boda and other small entities. Again, you could choose, for example, to broaden KIE, which already exists. So instead of giving them a paltry two, three hundred million to go and do this work, you know, give them 50 billion and let them get on with it uh, and so on. And I know uh, Muga is going to ask from where. <laughs> well, you first of all, stop stealing it. All right. <laughs> stop stealing it because really the, the amount of resources that, that go through preferage and waste is 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 incredible i mean uh, president who estimated two billion a day take the next point on digital economy uh expand programs that connect youth to the digital economy uh global networks for employment eric every county headquarter is connected to the national optic fiber network backbone mm. Now, what is not happening? What is not happening is that the ICT authority and, and you know, good people and, and all credit to our friend and colleague, Joe Musharu, but we, we are doing it in the, we, we are waiting for customers to show up and we think that the first customers are government institutions. What this requires is like that free primary education decision mm -hmm. that from tomorrow, any SME, any young person who wants to connect to Northby will connect to it. Mm -hmm. Because even the nodes for where you can connect exist. And you will find that in a month, perhaps uh, you cannot connect. So it is possible to do uh, sequencing and simultaneous. But let us go then to, 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 to uh, Muga's uh, question about devolution. And what uh, you will see there is uh, Azimiola Ugatuzi. Because the the devolution is is not just a necessary thing devolution is a, it, it was a necessary price to pay for the issues uh, that arose out of uh, uh, you know session of paper number 10 where certain regions moved ahead faster than others and that brought different a different, uh, you know, feeling of exclusion. So devolution is 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 uh, is a critical driver. The manufacturing we are talking about, the connection to ICT, all these things are happening in counties. Mm. So you must train uh, 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 counties, and uh, and I think that the big thing again on the question of devolution it goes back to political will and the ability to tame the national bureaucracy, which believes that they know or they have a better skill set. They're the ones to think to, and, 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 and you to implement. And us to implement. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we, we can... Uh, anyway, I think on this airwaves, <laughs> we have voiced... For, even now, and uh, we don't... They really owe you money. The, well, 39.9 billion to be exact in uh, conditional and unconditional grants. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, you notice we are about 20 days, days to, to the, the end, end of the, the financial year. <laughs> and I'm sure uh, come July, then you're going to be caning us to say, why did you folks 
uh, not utilize yeah, all your, the money. Your absorption rate is 0.01 percent. <laughs> yes, yet <laughs> the money will show up if it does. Uh, they, we were having a bit of a, a, a fight uh, mm. this last week mm. because uh, uh, the monies had not been included in a supplementary budget. As you know, there is a supplementary budget too, mm. necessitated uh, by whatever, but also to bring them on board because remember there was a high court judgment that said that the grants had to have their own law. It took us forever to persuade parliament to make the law. Once we got it done, uh, and it was signed into law, the still National Treasury has not uh, actioned it. We'll but talk about that, things, and, yeah. and I'm sure City will be asking. So you talk about all these things, 35% devolution to the counties, or uh, taking all the functions of the counties, and how that is going to be. Just one ride on that. I want to take a leave. break. Uh, just one ride on that. Uh -huh. That uh, you saw the promise. Uh, the former chairman of the Council of Devolution is the one going to head the national treasury. Yeah. So they won't be having problems yeah. because he's one of them. So, so we so will solve that bureaucratic My problem. friend, the current head of treasury is a former governor. So no, no, no. <laughs> there is but nothing. The, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. This is the president who stood for devolution. Yeah. If you go back to Bomas, <laughs> who pushed for devolution? <laughs> this candidate. He it's, has it's, lived it's okay, the devolution I, throughout I, his life. I give you that. I just keep saying every time that the former, the current CS for the National Treasury, the one that Nerito is fighting with, yeah. is a former governor. The difference is that this man who implemented the president devolution, himself, I'm sorry, the man, will be one who fought who, for this devolution. Okay. That's the difference. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Kenya's biggest conversation, it continues. We are looking at the Azimio Manifesto, which was launched yesterday by the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya uh, Coalition at Nyayo National Stadium. Joining us in the studio this morning are the two of the many people who participated in authoring this particular document. Professor Adam Zolo, a political scientist from the University of Nairobi. He was in the driver's seat of this particular process and His Excellency Dirito Murithi, the Governor of Lake Kipia County, who is also the Chairman of the Azimir Presidential Campaign Board. We are looking into the details of the city. You had asked about devolution, so yes, a, man, a number of the things that have been mentioned in this Azimir is Azimir Laugatuzi, saying, focus on devolution. Yes. Mm. The, if you look at the implementation of uh, the county, or the enactment of the, our county government, you would find that the actually running of those institutions and those who run them fall into several categories. First, you get the impression that most people who have those jobs are actually surprised they have them <laughs> because they, 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 they seem to be trying to figure out what it is that they're supposed to do. And then five, by the third year is when they seem to have an idea of what's going on. And by that time, so much, has, so much water has gone on the bridge, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Then there's the category of people who think that it's a talk show like ours where every once in a while they come to the uh, public and tell them stories about Mimi, Kama Fulani, I'm going to do this. In fact, the things that you saw me doing the other day, that's just the beginning. Mm. And the talk and the talk. The vast majority follow the category of people who think this whole thing about being a governor mm. is a get-rich-quick scheme. Mm. And hopefully I'll get away with it. Now, how does Azimio plan to make all these processes that they talk of, of revolutionizing our system, how do they plan to make the county system the center of all these activities that will bring about the change that they're talking about? How will they make sure that these governors are accountable? Because there are very few officials that we have in this country whose faults are pointed out by the Auditor General, like the county governments. Mm. There's, I mean, you, you, you can even get tired of, of reading the things and you wonder... Audit queries, yes, but must there be so many? By the time an audit query is being spoken of, it means you are asked to justify it, you are not able to justify it, or you gave some reason that was inadequate. Mm. If the Azimio coalition cannot convincingly explain to us as Kenyans how they hope to make this agenda of theirs centered on the county governments, I'm afraid to say that everything that they're going to say will fall in the category of mere words. Well, um... <coughs> I'm not quite sure, City, that it is correct um, that county governments attract the most audit queries. Um, mm. uh, yes, and 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 you know, if if I look at you know the big corruption scandals, if I look at Kemsa, 
if I look at uh, Kimwarel Dam, if I look at Aro Dam, all these are national government uh, issues. Mm. Now, do county governments have a, f a fair share of, of, of areas of improvement? They do. But they also have more than a fair share of their successes. And I want to give you a couple of examples. Um, and to look at uh, speed of, of change in the, in, the, in the economies of these counties. I mean, you will find counties that are growing at around 10%, which is what brings the national average to around 7, 7.5%. Seven yeah? In that category, you'll find people like Elegeo Maraquet, like EPI and others, growing at a very fast pace indeed. Um, you will find counties doing things, the things that we want done nationally. Some of us have been doing them in counties, like retrenchment. And, and streamlining a public service so that it is less, less wasteful. Yeah? Um, and we, we, so we are not just talking about things that we will do in the future. Uh, we are talking about things we will do in the future based on what we've been able to achieve at county level. So, and, and if you look at Azimula Ugatuzi, the idea is that the counties are at the heart of driving uh, the manufacturing agenda mm. that, that we're talking about. Just again to give you a couple of examples. When you go to Jed and Kemadi University, you will find there a factory right now, not tomorrow, making microchips. Yeah? Um, and just reflect on that for a moment. We are making microchips and exporting to the US and other, and other markets. And that, that business is only going to grow. Uh, you will find, uh, for example, the, the steel that we are talking about uh, again, in Nyeri, in, in Laikipia, in Taita Taveta, in all these places, you will find plenty of iron ore that is already identified. And the coal to fire it up is just next door in, in Kitui. So, the things are happening at counties. But obviously, uh, 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 you know, and, and it is my mantra in my own government in Laikipia, a good thing can be made better. But frankly, I think uh, devolution city is a is a, is the biggest opportunity from a transformation point of view because it creates 47 uh, possible centers of growth mm. as opposed to one center the challenge will be like what we were discussing and uh, what prof you wanted to comment on is on ensuring that the counties get the requisite funds timely yes. that they are also able to creatively generate on source revenue and to manage these finances well. Mm. What is the focus in this um, as a mere manifesto to make sure that counties are able first of receiving the money from the national government, their, their share of revenue, mm. and also are facilitated mm. to be able to generate their own revenues? Uh, Eric, the first thing I should say is that uh, governor use the word will. From where I sit, I use the word interest political interest so the first thing you look usually is does the national leader does the president have political interest in these county governments and for this particular candidate yes because this was at the cornerstone of his party manifesto it's something that he has pursued with zeal. Number two, uh, if you look at both BBI and the Azimio document, then you're seeing that uh, it is provided that uh, the, the amounts that will go to the county government, and you remember the opponent has really been hitting at this, mm. will increase from not less than 15% to not less than 35%. Mm. Uh, that should tell you that uh, this initiative looks at the counties as governor and says as part of a partner with the national government mm. number three is that and there it will confirm to you that uh, there has been a kind of tug of war if we were to look for example the question of health mm. that uh, city is very familiar with that health is a devolved function but when you finally look at the way uh, the government, the present government has operated, 
you'll find that most of the funds that are supposed to go to the health sector have remained at the national level as opposed to going to the county mm. government where the action is. Uh, if you look at the battles that they had uh, with uh, the national government over the equipment that were brought and all that, what we are basically saying is that in an Azimio government, because there is political interest mm. to make the county a partner in this governance process, then what we are saying is that you'll see a more passionate relationship right from IBEC to other intergovernmental relations uh, being more frequent and more structured. Mm. And I think it also goes to what City is raising about, uh, remember that county governments are not only going to be Azimio County government. I think it would be foolhardy for me to say that Azimio is going to win all the 47 counties. Mm. Definitely there are quite a number of counties that uh, Kenya Kwanzaa is going to win. And as the national government, you'll want a national treasury that sits up there and supports both the national government and the county government. And what was envisaged in the Constitution of Kenya 2010 was a national treasury that is up there that the national government does not treat as before. Mm. And therefore, it's a national treasury that serves both the national government and the county, and the county. government. And I can assure you that mm. in the manifesto, as Emir is saying, you'll have such a body that serves uh, both. Uh, lastly, what I can say is that uh, uh, going again to the 10-point agenda, mm. then you'll find that uh, the engine and the driver of economic revolution mm. is reflected in the one county, one product. That by itself tells you that we in Azimio and the national government in Azimio will not see the county government as a competitor, but rather as a partner in the realization of mm. this. And I can assure you that it will be done. Okay. I, I want to ask one thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we see things like this, we see grand plans like this, the question is, how is it going to be funded? You talked about the fact that, look, the money is there. CT always says, their money is there. There's money in the country. Let's not worry about anything like that. But it's being bled because of corruption. If anything, we've seen uh, maybe a bit of a romance with corruption. Okay, maybe we'll get rid of it today. Maybe we won't. But to me, if we're going to plug the hole, it's a matter of saying we are going to stop this. And from speculation, it can be that there is a reluctance. There's no will to actually plug the holes where corruption is thriving in this country and taking away the much needed funds to do anything like this. So what's it going to be? What is it really going to be? Not, yes, we'll end corruption, we'll jail people. But what is it really going to be to loosen up these funds that are much needed to do things like this if it's ever going to happen? And I think that's um, really the thing. Well, I think the, the promise uh, from the candidate and, and, and ourselves is to declare corruption a threat to national interest. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. that does is, is open wider, if you will, the repertoire of things you can do, you, we will do to tame corruption. I, and speaking from personal experience as governor of Lake Ipia, look, it, it took me I mean, a year and a half, I think, to, to grow revenue from 400 to something like uh, 700 billion. By doing some simple, straightforward things. Why, why do staff need to handle cash? Mm. In his day of Mpesa, just let the taxpayer pay by mobile money. Why do we, and so on. And as a matter of fact, the average tax to my micro businesses has gone down from 5,800 5, to 4,800 because we've doubled the number mm. that, are, that are paying. So it is really a fairly straightforward thing, but it goes back to will and character because the tone at the top is 
what is going to be critical in winning. Because you see, as you reform the organization, the, the, the staff members all, all across the organization are looking at the behavior of the top leadership. Mm. And they will generally follow cue uh, to that behavior. Even when they are friends who've got their finger in the cookie jar, even when mm. they are friends of the administration, friends of the would-be executive who have been tainted. Will it be easy to say, look, Dorito, you're my friend. However, I know that you have done one, two, three. We've put you through the necessary process and we see that you've come out guilty. Will we see a clear, clear move to say friends or not? We're going to get rid of this thing. And I have no doubt in my mind. And when I look at uh, uh, our presidential candidate, when I look at our deputy president candidate, mm. I mean, their character, and they have demonstrated time and time again mm. that they will not sacrifice principle uh, on the basis of friendship and so on. And and I would say that the uh, in, in the times of, Kibaki one mm. that's exactly what made a difference that you saw people really close to Kibaki uh, you know fall on the sword because uh, they were caught in 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 a circumstance uh, of of uh, of corruption mm. so uh, I have no doubt in my mind mm. that this is going to to happen uh, and if you look at at uh, uh, even say choices already being made, uh, in the in the processes of of nomination, uh, that look, yes, you're my friend, but you you know we uh, yeah Eric if you, if you, you are know. if you are twenty percent <laughs> we we are not going to prefer you to CT who is at forty percent <laughs> excellency who's yeah. doing is better? it possible for mm. Azimio, you've told us what you want to do mm -hmm. we've heard okay is it possible to spend a little time before the elections mm. telling the citizens of this country how exactly you are going to do it. The, ha the what we've gotten mm -hmm. when we talk of education when you talk of agriculture yes. when we talk of this specify even the areas where you plan to this so people know if I'm interested in growing cotton and I live here this is what we are going to do so break down the conversation now going forward in the next 60 days 6 to 3 days indeed uh, uh, saying this is how we are going to how we propose to do these things indeed is that, is that the plan in, 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 uh, and yeah. look, uh, for, for instance, uh, uh, look, let's go into some detail. I yeah. think that if, if that's, uh, that's what I understand you to not be quite. saying. Not, okay. not for now. I'm, okay. He's yeah. just asking you to say, is that the plan? Yes. The, okay. the answer is yes. You see, if, okay. you look at, if you go deeper in the manifesto, yeah. for when we say manufacturing and we say which manufacturing and therefore which county. Excellency, mm -hmm. the majority of us will not read that document. We yeah, will but, tell you from the mountain top. Yes. <laughs> yes. And but we, right. will, we will willingly come to the rallies well, and listen we to conclude, you. We conclude the conversation. But I have got to ask you this question, <laughs> uh, Prof. Yes. This Azimio La Ugatuzi, there are very many things. It does not have Azimio La BBI. And you wrote this manifesto. Yes. You wrote BBI as well. Yes. So but is BBI part of the agenda of this administration? Look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can see that issues BBI, some issues BBI. Do you know, remember, BBI was pigeonholed into only the constitutional changes. Mm. BBI had four components. There was the constitutional changes, there were the policy changes, there were the legislative changes, there were the administrative action points. And the issues that cut across are already there. If you look at the 35%, it's already there. To devolved government is already there. If you look at uh, the tax relief uh, for university students, the seven-year holiday, mm -hmm. it is already there. So issues that are Wanainchi connected, because mm -hmm. he, uh, uh, going to the question that he, he has raised, mm -hmm. issues that came from Wanainchi are factored in there which were in our administrative action point mm. and by the way ct yes. uh, later we shall be having a uh, region specific and county specific uh 
action points because that's what you're saying yeah uh, you have said yeah uh, you guys don't have a reading culture we understand uh we don't blame you for not having that reading culture <laughs> but <laughs> we shall <laughs> still do something that is specific to the culture. <laughs> thank you very much <laughs>